Today we are going through every echo ability in Wuthering Waves. For those who don't know what echoes are, they are your best friend and your worst enemy in the game. You will farm them every day because they provide stats for your characters and one of your equipped echoes, the one in the first slot, is going to give you a special skill when you press Q. Now that we are all on the same page, there are 51 different echoes in the closed beta test 2, each with a unique ability. Some are more expensive to equip so we'll go through the most expensive to the least. Echoes that are going to cost 4 points of the max capacity are the world bosses that you will farm for ascension materials and the weekly bosses for talents. Now some of these do have color variations and the color sets available during the CBT2 is the phantom set. These are not the same as shiny echoes, these are special colors that are usually event rewards and they have no added bonuses or enhancements, they're just a different color. So the Thundering Memphis will provide an Electro Damage bonus and Resonance Liberation bonus after using his full 6 hit combo. And he will also only have the Void Thunder Sonata effect, which is your artifact set bonus in Genshin terms. If you have Jian, you will want to get Winston from Overwatch 2. Greetings! I mean the Felian Beringle, which also has a Phantom color set. The Echo will provide an Aero Damage bonus and a Heavy Attack bonus. The only Sonata effect for this Echo is the Sierra Gale. Next is the Inferno Rider. He does have a motorbike when you fight him that he will jump off after you break his poise for the first time, but when you use him for yourself, he won't bring out his bike, but has a strong 3 hit combo and provides a fusion bonus and liberation bonus. He will only have the Molten Riff Sonata effect. <laughs> Tempest Mephis is similar to the Thundering Mephis. They look the same and they both deal electro damage. You will get an electro damage increase and a heavy damage increase after using this echo, and it again only provides the Void Thunder Sonata effect. Yeah. In my opinion, the Crownless is one of the coolest world bosses. This is for Havoc characters because of the Havoc damage bonus and resonant skill it provides off the use. Once again, the Sonata effect is only the Havoc set bonus. The Lumpy Lumen Myriad confused a lot of players on exactly how to get to its location. It is locked behind a quest. This one is made for Glacier characters with its Glacier damage bonus and skill damage bonus while only being available with the Glacier Sonata effect. If you plan to build Rover, then you will want to farm the Morning Eggs as this is the best in slot for Spectra characters. It does provide Spectra and Liberation damage bonus after being used for the character that has it equipped. There's also the Phantom color available, but I just don't have it unlocked. One of the more interesting Tessa Discords, which I'm sure has lore around it being one of the few mecha enemies, the mech abomination will charge up when you attack an enemy after it is cast and deals damage. Once it is fully charged, it will then deal damage again, but on a larger scale. After casting it, you'll also get an attack bonus. The Impermanent Heron is possibly the best in slot for sub DPS and support characters. It provides a buff for your next character that takes the field if an outro skill is triggered and provides energy for your current character while still dealing massive havoc damage. Currently the only weekly boss available as an echo is the Balborn Geo Shalon. This echo doesn't actually come on field, it just provides a shield which is the same shape as the ball on its back. It does have casting damage that scales up defense and increases attack while the shield is active. The next bunch of echoes are going to be the elite enemies around the map. They cost 3 points per echo to equip and provide a variety of different skills. Unlike the world bosses, they do not provide buffs to your characters. These echoes only deal damage, block or heal. The Cyan Feathered Heron will dash forward causing aero damage. It does have a special trait that will break an opponent's special skill if it damages the enemy that is busy casting it.
The Violet Feathered Heron is a bit different. This one will stay in place when summoned and block an attack. Once it is attacked or after the block duration, it will unleash a counter attack and recover a bit of resonance energy for your character. The Stonewall Bracer would charge forward after it's been cast until it hits an enemy or after a certain distance. Downside is you cannot change the direction of its attack, but you can cancel it by pressing the scale button again. The Floaters basically have a never let like attack, firing a laser that continuously deals electro damage. It will recover one resonance energy each time damage is caused. The Tamburinus will be summoned on field and generates Havoc Echoes at home to your active character. When the active character then makes an attack, it will deal an instance of Havoc damage at the same time. Chasm Guardian will consume 10% of your current HP when it lands its strike. This attack will be Havoc damage and you will then recover the HP lost over the next 5 seconds. The Rocksteady Guardian is a defensive echo that will block in place for a short duration. This is one of the few echoes that scales off your character's HP when it comes to damage and will deal multiple instances of spectral damage when it's attacked during its block. This is the mature or adult version of the Rose Shroom. It will be summoned alongside you to deal 3 instances of Havoc damage while it emits a laser. This overgrown lizard or dragon known as the Burblaze Saurian will be summoned on the enemy and breathe fire onto the enemy causing 10 instances of fusion damage. <laughs> There is a level 120 version of the Spearback that gives you a guaranteed 5 star copy of this Echo. Although it's not worth the grind if you are under leveled, the Spearback has a 5 hit combo when summoned and that deals physical damage. The Havoc Dreadman is the adult version of the wolf and as you can guess by its name it will be dealing Havoc damage. There is the miniature version or the baby versions of these wolves but they are fusion wolves so they might still add in Havoc versions of the baby ones and different adult versions as well. <laughs> the Who Chief otherwise known as Young Winton is going to clap the enemy cheeks of the discard dealing arrow damage. Some players call this enemy the Mimic. Your active character will transform into the Chase Razor when you cast your Echo skill, dealing multiple instances of arrow damage. <laughs> the final of the 3 point cast Echoes in the CBT2 is the Auto Puppet Scout. This will deal massive amounts of Glacier damage compared to the other Echoes and generates up to 3 Ice Walls that can block enemies and damage. The rest of the Echoes will all cost 1 point to equip them out of your max capacity. Now these Echoes have unique abilities as well, they're not completely useless. Some of them are actually pretty funny and the ones that deal damage are basically just scaled down versions of the more expensive Echoes. The Vanguard Jungrok will summon alongside your active character and charge forward dealing physical damage.
Vision Jungkook is another Junrock that will summon alongside your active character and heal all allies within the AoE. The Electro Predator will be summoned alongside your character to shoot 5 arrows at the enemy with its aimbot to deal electro damage. The final shot will deal significantly more damage than the initial 4. Glacier Predator is the wannabe Gian throwing his ice spear into the ground dealing glacier damage while it charges up. Once fully charged, the spear will explode dealing more glacier damage. <laughs> It's almost funny that Genshin and Honkai character abilities are somewhat the echo skills rather than the actual characters in Wuthering Waves, and the Aero Predator has an attack that spins and bounces off enemies dealing Aero damage. This low key reminds me of Sampo from Star Rail. This echo is kind of special because you need to hold the echo skill button to perform a block instead of pressing it like every other echo skill. If you are attacked during the block, you will launch a counter attack dealing massive fusion damage and reduce the skill cooldown time by 70%. This is definitely one of the better echoes. Havoc Warrior, as you can probably guess, will deal Havoc damage to enemies. It is basically a miniature version of the Thundering Memphis with 3 attacks. Starting off with Zigzag, he will deal Spectra damage and creates a stagnation field that slows your enemy for 1.8 seconds. Now this does slow your enemy down quite a bit. <laughs> The Snip Snap will summon alongside your active character and throw fireballs at your enemy, dealing fusion damage. There are some crazy names for Echoes and this one is called Wuff Wuff. This is somewhat like Farazon or Sucrose from Genshin, creating a small field that crowd controls light enemies and deals aero damage. This little fella is called Tic Tac. For enemies, he is pretty annoying because he will charge and bite them when cast. The charge and bites are separate damage instances and will also continuously reduce enemy resonance energy for 5 seconds. <laughs> The Glacier Prism will be summoned alongside your active character to use its aimbot and fire 3 Glacier Shards on an enemy, dealing Glacier damage. <laughs> The Fusion Prism is similar to the Glacier Prism but will only fire one fireball instead of three shards, causing a single instance of fusion damage. Yep. <laughs> Havoc Prism will be summoned alongside your active character to fire five homing shards that deal Havoc damage to enemies. Probably the best prism is the Spectro Prism. This one will emit a laser that causes up to 8 counts of Spectro damage. <laughs> the Gulp Puff can sometimes be annoying to farm because they go into water deeper than what your characters can stand, but they will blow 5 bubbles when summoned to cause glacier damage. Hmm. <laughs> 
可是。The choke puff is sometimes found with the gold buffs. These will take a deep breath before spewing a jet of air, dealing air damage, and has a guaranteed knockback effect. When summoning the cruise wing, you will see a line that attaches to your current character. This means that your character is being healed up to 4 times, scaling on your maximum HP. Excrat is another one of those funny ones. When summoned, you will burrow into the ground and move around, and all damage will be mitigated. Unlike other echoes that move, you can control the direction you move with this one. The Cyber Boy is a pretty simple attack. It will fling small enemies into the air when summoned, causing physical damage when it attacks. Unlike its adult version, the baby Verblaze Saurian will not deal any damage to the enemy. When you use this Echo, you will transform into the baby Verblaze Saurian and sleep in place until you are attacked or the skill ends. When you are the Echo, you will continuously recover HP. This is pretty helpful to use when you're not in battle. <laughs> Much like its adult version, the baby Roshrim will aim at a laser when summoned to deal havoc damage. Fusion Dreadmain Miner will be summoned to bite the enemy. The bite attack will deal fusion damage. <laughs> Baby Winton or the Who's Camp Flinger will pounce onto enemies at the cost of zero peanut butter, dealing arrow damage. That's another Overwatch joke. The scorpion called Diamond Claw in the game will enter a defensive state when cast. Once the defense is lifted, it will deal physical damage. You do transform into it, this is not a summon. The Hortoise is the funniest of all the Echoes and even comes with its own achievement the first time you cast its skill. It does absolutely nothing and enemies can hit you around like a pinball. You can remain this Echo for quite a long time and slowly regenerate HP while transformed into this Echo. Final echo in the CBT2 is the Traffic Illuminator. Summoning this echo will cause one second of immobilization to enemies. If you do attack the enemy during the immobilization, it will immediately be lifted. <laughs> Those are all the 51 Echo abilities currently available in Wuthering Waves. Subscribe for everything Genshin and Wuthering Waves, and I will see you in the next video.